Hello, I'm Dmitry with Haro Canucks and GTC Happen, which is the annual GPU technology conference in San Jose. They hold many and very interesting and very advanced seminars on how GPUs are applied within all types of sectors. So space exploration, medicine, mobile sector, the automotive sector, and many, many more. So it really is a developer's playground to see the direction of GPUs and how they shape this uh, technology world. So there were a couple of highlights from the show that we'll go over in this video. So the first one is of course Nvidia announcing the Titan Z or Titan Z, however you want to call it, depending on where you are in the world. So the Titan Z incorporates dual GK110 unlocked cores, so basically two Titan Blacks combined into one single card with 5760 CUDA cores. 12 gigabytes of VRAM, so 6 gigabyte per GPU, and they're also tuned to operate at the same frequency to avoid bottlenecks. It's a two and a half inch slot card, so it's slightly thicker. I don't think it was very clear when Jensen was holding it, and it will require three PCI slots, and it is priced at the whopping, wait for it, at the whopping $3,000. Now in a world where you can get two Titan Blacks, or could potentially get, depending on availability, for $2,000, you can imagine there was a lot of outcry from the community asking about the $3,000 uh, price. Perhaps it has been sprinkled with something very expensive. On top of that, Nvidia is placing the Titan Z within their GeForce line, which is the gaming line. So I would consider this to be more of a computational supercomputer or micro supercomputer for your needs. Um, but they're still placing within the gaming line. And you have to ask yourself, with 4K still hovering around us uh, to still kind of trying to break into the consumer market, NVIDIA is already pushing towards 5K gaming with the Titan Z. NVIDIA also announced uh, their next generation graphics architecture, which is Pascal. It's codenamed Pascal and incorporates so many cool features like unified memory, so it's a shared memory pool between the CPU and the GPU. They'll uh, it'll also incorporate 3D memory, so it's a, a memory that's stacked on top of each other that allows higher bandwidth, uh, much improved energy efficiency, and allows for uh, much more capacity to be installed uh, on, the, on the GPU board. So Pascal, we're going to see the actual graphics card to be smaller, perhaps a smaller form factor. But the most uh, interesting thing about Pascal is uh, what NVIDIA calls NVLink. So NVLink is the new interface for communication between the CPU and the GPU that will complement PCI Express bus. It will not replace it, but allow for five to 12 times bandwidth increase, allowing for much faster data share. Now this of course is very exciting for developers and the high performance crowd who really care about compute uh, as the NVIDIA really sort of teases us with what supercomputers are to become in 2016 when Pascal finally rolls out. But this doesn't mean that NVLink and Pascal are not totally out of the consumer world, as NVLink as a concept would be ideal and really perfect for SLI configurations. As you think about it, it will reduce bandwidth and will allow a more seamless communication between the CPU and the GPU, potentially allowing that unleashed performance uh, for gaming in SLI systems. Oculus 2 also made an appearance at GTC this year where they're showcasing DK2, the developing kit 2, and from what I can tell you, it is a much needed improvement over the DK1. You now have a higher resolution display, so pixels are still visible, but you can now really focus on the graphics of the game rather than checking out the grid lines between pixels. The new motion sensor has been added to the actual headset uh, allowing you actual 3D positioning of your head with side to side, up and down, and really makes it so much more fun and immersive. And the fact that DK2 is here, this is very exciting. This means that we are so much closer to consumer release almost two years after the Kickstarter project. Another awesome thing we saw at GDC on the floor was Lenovo's entrance within the North American market with Lenovo S9 Smart TV. Now Lenovo is not very popular with the North American market when it comes to TVs, but they're huge in Asia. So they're really storming the market, the North American market with this uh, awesome Smart TV incorporating Tegra. So this integration of Nvidia's Tegra K1 SoC comes in the form of a smart card or a module that you plug into the television at the back. And since it's an actual system built into the smart card, it features Android 4.4 and has the power to play all of your Android games right from your couch. 
Lenovo will include a controller, uh, plus there's a wireless remote for navigation within the smart menu. And the fact that Tegra One is being integrated into smart TVs is great, so giving us the extra power to drive Android gaming off your couch. Of course, there were also many cars on the show floor featuring TK1 integration within the automotive industry for self-navigation, smart assist, and many more applications. So out of all of these announcements, which ones did you find most interesting or gulp indulging? Because I know the Titan Z price tag, as it was announced on Twitter, it was exploding. So let us know how you feel about that. Don't forget to subscribe for more similar content, and we'll see you in the next one.